Let's begin right here in the East African region. Let's cross live now to Uganda, to the capital, Kampala, where our correspondent Solomon Serwanje is on standby, following up on that story that we be, did report what did happen a few months ago, the uh, killing of the former spokesperson of police in Uganda, Andrew Kawesi. And uh, uh, there has been a lot of human rights queries being asked in the, in the on the floor of the Uganda National Assembly. There has been pressure to assess the alleged ongoing torture at Nalufenya police station and immediately present a detailed report to parliament. Uh, the police say the worrying health situation of the suspects there, including the alleged torture, torture of Kamwangi Town Council Mayor Geoffrey Biamukama, cannot make people's representatives silent on a matter that is now of national importance. And now to bring more perspective to this, let's now bring in uh, Solomon Sarwanja joining us live from Kampala, Uganda. Solomon, good afternoon. And what can you tell us about this story from Uganda? Well, a very good afternoon to you, Ben Kitsili, here in Kampala, Uganda. The story of torture continues to make headlines now since the death and the assassination of Andrew Felix Kawesi, the then the spokesperson of police. Over 40 people have been arrested, and some of them have not even been brought to court. Now, that violates the 48-hour rule of anyone who is arrested should be aligned before court. Now, the biggest point or biggest story is that the people who have been arrested have been taken to Nalufenya police station, where they have been detained. Now, for some of those who manage to come to court, they literally showed court that they had been beaten, battered, and broken is just the, the, the way I can express it. Many of them showing their wounds, others shaking, and others in terrible, terrible state, something that has caused a lot of mixed reactions across the public here. Of course, members of parliament coming out clear to condemn this act, human rights activists, and also the media has made its statement on the torture going on in Uganda. Recently, the president also came out to say that the security agencies cannot be seen torturing people, Ben, but it is a big, big issue here in Uganda. Matter of fact, the Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Kadaga, has directed the Human Rights Committee of Parliament to go to Nalufenya Police Station and to find out what really is going up there and then return to the House with a detailed report. And, of course, literally everyone is just very, very angry about the way these suspects are treated, Ben. And what has the government had to say about this, Solomon? Well, um, just to say that the president recently wrote a letter to the inspector general of police and to other security agencies saying that you cannot use torture as a means of extracting evidence because first you can be torturing a suspect who is not actually guilty and they just accept that I'm guilty for you to, you know, to stop torturing them. So the president said you cannot absolutely continue torturing suspects. You can use other forms of evidence like fingerprints, like, you know, follow another line of evidence rather than torture. Well, there's some people in the security circles who, who say that, well, this torture can also be used as a form of extracting evidence in some, you know, in some places, many of them citing examples of what's happening in Guantanamo Bay. But of course, according to Article 44 of the National Constitution, it is... It is a human right enshrined in the very constitution that we stand for as a country that you cannot torture anyone. And even the Evidence Act is against any, you know, comments that have been made by a suspect who has been tortured. That evidence is considered null and void. So, Ben, the, the issue of torturing people here is a big story. Now, it comes just after General Kale Kaihura, who is the Inspector General of Police, was recently given another term. He will be at the helm of police for three more years. The question is, what, where is the country going? And some people saying that the speaker herself is to blame for passing General Kale Kaihura or giving him another term in office because she chaired the appointments committee of parliament. So, Ben, the situation here in Uganda is that torture is condemned. Matter of fact, the Uganda Human Rights Commission has since ordered the IGP Inspector General Kale Kaihura and the CMI boss, which is the Chieftains of Military Intelligence here in Uganda, and also the Chief uh, of Defense Forces here to appear before the Human Rights Commission to defend the torture, uh, torture allegations on the suspects who were involved in the uh, murder of the late AIGP Andrew Felix Kawesi Ben. What you're saying, Solomon, is that it is more about what uh, has been 
happening since the murder of Andrew Felix Kawesi and the pressure that it has brought maybe on the police uh, to try and, you know, make a statement that, you know, you can't just uh, kill a police officer. It is, is it safe to say that it's more about that rather than what the law says and what, you know, has been the situation of human rights uh, in terms of uh, use of torture in Uganda? Well, Ben, this country is governed by the rule of law. We have a constitution in place that is against constitution, that is against any form of violence now. If I can be exact, I did cite earlier on Article 44 of our constitution is against use of torture. It's against someone, it's against, I mean, human rights watch has come out against this. So whether a police officer was killed and therefore you want to torture people to get evidence, it is against the very constitution that we stand for as a country. And so the police is on the spot. Uh, General Kale Kaihura himself has not come out uh, openly to give a statement on the torture going on. But of course, he has already directed that those who, uh, of course, he hasn't literally come out to the media, but we've also seen a letter directing that all the police officers who are involved in the torture should be uh, probed by the police professions unit and later on may be prosecuted before the courts of law. So the argument here is does torture stand as a means of extracting evidence? from the suspects. Now, that there is a point of contention. Many human rights activists against this, uh, you know, this torture, the country is up in arms against this, and, and therefore I think it's an issue that is going to remain on the headlines in Uganda. And of course, we will wait to see uh, the Human Rights Committee of Parliament presenting that report. Nalufenya Police Station, Ben, if I can bring you up to speed, is located in Jinja, uh, quite uh, just a few kilometers after the Nile. But you can ask anyone who has, uh, you know, passed by. There was actually a, a politician who came out to say that he has sat, he has moved closer to Nalufenya Police Station and he has had a stench and therefore he's suspecting that there are some people who could have died there and maybe buried there. So the Human Rights Committee of Parliament is going to be looking into Nalufenya Police Station. They will be talking to some of the suspects in custody. They will be speaking to some of the people who manage Nalufenya Police Station and therefore they'll come up with a concrete report that they'll table before the legislators in the House so that the whole parliament can be able to debate that and put it to rest. But Ben, Nalufenya Police Station is where they always take Dr. Kiza Besije uh, every time he's arrested. So he, he, he has given his testimony again uh, on, on the condition in Nalufenya. But if we were to broaden the whole discussion of torture in Uganda, I mean, this is not the first time we've seen such cases. Year in, year out, Human Rights Watch has come out with reports against the police. The Uganda Human Rights Commission has literally ranked police as the most, you know, um, torment of, like, of people and abuse of human rights. So there are several cases. I mean, let's talk about the Kasese killings that happened recently. There are people who were arrested, and some of them came to court, and they literally showed their palms cracked and others beaten with their backs torn apart and shredded, and they're saying that the police has tortured them. I think it's, as, as a country, it's time for Uganda to wake up to, uh, you know, to against this torture, torture you know, sort of treatment so that, because today it may not be me, but tomorrow you could hear, Ben, that I'm in Nalufenya, and therefore, as a country, we need to rise together against this form of torture, Ben. Torture, but still about human rights in Uganda. There was a few weeks ago, uh, activist and university lecturer Stella Nyazi was arrested. Is it something that has become a kind of a trend in Uganda, the issue of human rights, would you say? Well, I think the discussion around Stella Nyanz is rather different from this one because, um, you know, right now, of course, the way you can look at Stella Nyanz, you can look at her from different perspectives. To some people, she has a reason to fight. To others, she's just abusing uh, the, 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 the men in, in, in the driving seat, men and women in the driving seat. So depends. Uh, it depends on which prism you're really looking at it. Well, some people may look at her as a human rights defender. Others may look at her as someone who just wakes up to abuse people or to abuse the first lady and to abuse the president. So, Ben, it looks like it's a catch-22 here. I don't want to, like, authoritatively say that she was arrested because, you know, of A, A, B, C, D, and E. But what I'm sure, though, is that uh, that issue is in court. And uh, there, there, are several, uh, there are several court proceedings that we await very soon because right now there will be a decision whether she 
you know, she, 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 well, government said that she's psychologically tortured, like she's psychologically not right and therefore she should go for a medical treatment, but court is supposed to decide on that later on. The issue of Stella Nyans is rather different, Ben, if I should say. So they are giving us details of what's happening there in terms of the human rights situation, human rights uh, organization there are coming out to, uh, hit out at the government for what it calls torture of people. Many thanks, Solomon. Let's come back.